Hello, in today's video I want to show you three cheap ways to do macro photography or videos. Before I get into the equipment, I will clarify some things about macro photography. First is working distance versus minimum focus distance. And second thing is the magnification ratio in correlation with your sensor size. So let's get into it. Minimum focusing distance is the distance between your subject and the sensor. And your working distance is the distance between the subject and you, the front of the lens. When working at longer distances, the difference between the two is irrelevant. But when doing macro photography, this distance can become crucial. For instance, if you want to photograph insects, many insects tend to flee if you get too close to them. And that's why you want to know how close can you get to them. So how big is your working distance? The working distance depends on different factors. Most important is the focal length of your lens. And um, it also depends on the length of your lens. The working distance can become smaller when you extend your macro lens and also when you add some macro tubes to your lens. I will show you some examples of different magnification ratios and working distances at different focal lengths in the equipment part of this video. Magnification ratio describes the size of your subject on your sensor. So a one-to-one -one magnification ratio means that the subject has the same size in real life and on your sensor. A one-to-two magnification ratio, for instance, means that your subject is half as big as in real life on your sensor. And a two-to-one magnification ratio means that it is double the size on your sensor. To know how big uh, the subject will be on your image, you will have to know the size of your sensor. So when we take a Micro Four Thirds sensor that I am using, the Micro Four Thirds sensor has the dimensions of 17 by 13 millimeters. And if you have a subject that has this size and a lens that has a one-to-one -one magnification ratio, your subject will fill the entire screen. If you take a picture of the same subject with a bigger sensor, like a 35 millimeter sensor, which has the dimensions of 36 by 24 millimeters and also have a lens with a one-to-one -one magnification ratio, your subject won't fill the entire screen. So you have to keep in mind that a one-to-one -one magnification ratio for a specific lens has different uh, outputs on different sensor sizes. So when you want to photograph uh, specific subjects that have a specific size, you maybe need uh, different magnification ratios with different cameras. So with that out of the way, let's go into the equipment part of this video. So the equipment I want to cover in this video are first macro tubes. They come in different variations. This is a electronic one and this is a manual one without any contacts. Then we have reverse adapters and last but not least a vintage macro lens. So macro tubes are empty tubes without any glass in them and so they have no impact on image quality. They are available with electronic contacts and without electronic contacts. The later ones are usually uh, usually a bit cheaper. When you have electronic ones you retain autofocus with your lenses and also if your lens is stabilized that stabilization also works with these electronic macro tubes. For old manual lenses or manual lenses in general you would only need uh, the tubes without any electronic contacts. What macro tubes do is they reduce your minimum focusing distance, but they also reduce your working distance. They are usually adjustable. You click, can click several of them together or the manual ones I have 
uh, are screwed together in different sizes. The more tubes you add to your lens or between the lens and your camera, the more magnification ratio you get, but also the closer you get to your subject. And you also lose more and more light the higher your magnification ratio gets. You can't focus to infinity anymore and your focus range becomes quite narrow. Macro tubes should only be as long as the focal length of your lens or you will get too close to the subject and you will eventually hit it with the front of your lens. Macro tubes are also quite handy for getting close-ups with a long telephoto lens that has a rather big minimum focusing distance. So by attaching a macro tube you can get your subject quite big in your image and still keep some distance to your subject. So next up we have reverse adapters. A reverse adapter has a thread on one side and a attachment to your camera mount on the other side. So you attach the reverse adapter to the front of your lens and then attach this adapter to your camera. So your lens is mounted backwards on your camera. You can do this with any lens as long as you have the correct uh, thread for the front ring of your lens. You could also use step up or step down rings to attach the adapter to different lenses. So the setup changes uh, how your lens works. It now works like a bit like a magnification glass. Um, you can achieve higher than one to one magnification ratios. And you can go even higher by adding macro tubes between the reverse adapter and your camera. The shorter your focal length of your lens is, the higher magnification ratios you can achieve. When testing this I noticed it doesn't work with every lens. I tested an old Minolta 100mm uh, lens and I didn't get any sharp picture with this combination. Of course mounting the lens in reverse on your camera has some, brings some difficulties. Uh, first you expose the back of your lens to weather and dust. That's maybe something you don't want to do with a very expensive lens. You can't control electronic lenses because they are not connected to the camera. Focus is not so important since you focus by moving the camera, but you can't control depth of field with your aperture. There is a trick you can use if you have your camera in manual mode, set the aperture to maybe f8 and detach the lens from the camera while the camera is still on and the lens will keep the aperture until you reconnect it to the camera. There are also electronic reverse adapters but they are quite expensive ranging from 200 to 350 euros. And uh, one thing you have to keep in mind when uh, attaching the lens in reverse, you basically uh, are set at a specific focusing distance or specific magnification ratio and uh, don't have uh, any flexibility for changing your framing. What is also quite cheap uh, for macro photography are vintage macro lenses. There are some lenses that have really good quality and they are quite affordable. I have a Minota 50mm f3.5 lens. It has a magnification ratio of 1 to 2 and comes with an extension tube which is basically a macro tube designed for this lens that brings this lens to a 1 to 1 magnification ratio. My example of this lens was like new when I bought it, uh, although it is over 30 years old and it produces really sharp and nice images. The big advantage of using a dedicated macro lens is of course the flexibility. You can choose your magnification ratio you want and you can also focus on infinity if you need it. A dedicated macro lens also has the advantage of being designed for close-up photography, so they usually have a very good resolution and sharpness and also they have no distortion. So after all these different examples I will show you some comparison between lenses of the same focal length 
uh, with macro tubes, with the reverse adapter and the dedicated macro lens, all at 50 mm focal length. I chose a 1 to 2 magnification ratio for the comparison of these three setups. And as you can see, they produce very similar and very good results. So to sum it up, uh, macro tubes are great uh, if you want to have something with you and just in case you need to get some macro shots. Uh, they are lightweight and uh, easy and fast to set up. Also when using uh, electronic macro tubes, you retain uh, autofocus, uh, lens stabilization and aperture control on electronic lenses. Reverse adapters are also very lightweight but they are a bit more difficult to install and uh, you have the disadvantage of exposing the rear of your lens to weather and dust. Also you can't control uh, anything on your electronic lenses since they lose the electronic contacts to your camera. And you are set to a very small focus range or magnification ratio with a specific setup. The biggest advantage of a reverse adapter is that you can achieve magnification ratios uh, much higher than 1 to 1. A dedicated macro lens has the advantage of being the most flexible of the three options I showed you today. Uh, you can achieve different magnification ratios, different working distances and even focus on infinity. They also uh, are designed for close focus or micro photography and have very good image quality. Uh, but of course they take up more space and weight in your camera bag than the other two options. So this comes down to if you want to take a lot of macro photos, I would, would recommend a dedicated macro lens because it provides the most flexibility. If you just want to have something with you to take an occasional macro shot, I would recommend macro tubes. And if you need higher magnification ratios that one to one and want to get really close to the su subjects, I would recommend getting reverse adapters and additional macro tubes. So that's all for today. I hope you liked this video and found it useful. If you do so, then please consider to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to get more videos on photography and videography. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!